Okay, let's get started on our beautiful spring picture by um, this amazing artist. So I'm going to, again, tell you the colors I'm using today, but they will be linked um, somewhere in the comments section for this video. And these are, again, the Copic markers, and you can use these time and time again in many different combinations. So today we're using YR000 Silk. We're using E11 Burley Beige. We're using E21 Soft Sun, E50 Eggshell, E04 Lipstick Natural. And actually, I don't need this pink, I'm setting that aside. And we're using R20 Blush. So what I'm going to do is slide these to the right of my picture area and keep them in line from the lightest to the darkest sort of, or at least in the order of I'm going to use them. And that way I always put them back in the same place, right to the right of my picture, so I can work quickly on the paper in the manner where I want to start blending before things dry. And I always keep a blank page next to my current page for testing, if my markers get dry, things like that. So let's get started. We're going to start with the lightest. The YR000 Silk, which is like a base. And we wanna only work on one area at a time so that we don't do like the whole base all the way down to here. And then we're working up here for a while and this alcohol ink will be all dried by the time we wanna start blending. So what I like to do is start around the, the left side and work to my right side around the nose and then upward. So the base layer is just to kind of, and this is a very light color, this silk, and I like to use the brush tip. So the base color is just gonna start putting down some skin color here, as you can see. I am gonna go over the lips because we want them to look like natural skin before we put lipstick on. And I'm going to go over the nose. And I'm going to kind of, and I don't have to get every little spot, you know, we're just kind of trying to get that base layer over. And as your alcohol marker um, begins to, you know, dry out over time or it's time to replace it, it'll be a little bit more work to get the ink down. Um, I do replace mine quite a lot, but I use them all the time. And we see how we're stopping at the top of the nose, and then we're going to do over the eyes. Now, if you were doing this in a coloring book, um, that's a completely different paper. It will dry faster, so you wouldn't be able to do quite as much surface at once. So it's okay to leave some white areas. So let's put that down in the first position and grab our next one, which is the Barely Beige E11. And this is a really nice natural skin tone that's great for the kind of shadow areas where there's some darker gray scale. So I'm gonna go under her eye and over where you see some of this, this darker area here from kind of like the pencil under her chin, bottom of her chin, kind of like around the nose here, on the nose, this whole area all the way in here we see it dark under the eye again. We're gonna do a kind of outline her hair, bottom of her chin. Get a little right there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to blend. And we probably will do a little more layer over the eye, wherever you see these darker areas. Okay, so now put that back as number two, left to right. Grab the third one, the E21 Soft Sun. And this is just a little lighter than the Barely Beige. And we're gonna blend kind of, it's a little more yellowish. And we're gonna blend right over where we did that Barely Beige, but stretch it upward or down just a little to catch a little fresh white space, if that makes sense. Just a little. And if you don't have the soft sun, you can skip the soft sun and go right to the next color I'm going to show you after this. It'll just be a different look. 
My soft sun is seeing better days, so it's running. All right. So now I'm gonna get number four on my left to right, my eggshell, which is my almost my favorite skin tone next to the Barely Beige, E50. And this is where we're gonna start blending just a little around the nose, because we're not gonna be doing blush there. But before we really start bringing in this color, the skin tone, we need to put on some blush. So set this on the left. I want you to get your pink, the E04 Lipstick Natural, and start doing this darker pink right around, just right around her hair here. Just a little, just a little shadow, and then grab the lighter one, the blush, the R20, and pull this pink out a little. You're gonna hear it squeaking a little. My blush needs to be replaced. Cause it's my absolute favorite, um, my absolute favorite blush color. Really pushing it here. I think I have another one, but I don't have it in front of me. There we go. All right, and we're gonna put a little of that pink right here around her nose. And if my your pink's too dry, just grab your other pink. A little bit of that right in there. And let's go back to that eggshell and just start. Blending from where your darker soft sun other shades left off. Start trying to go over those colors and filling in some white space. You're just gonna kind of pull downward. If you can get your if you can train yourself to work somewhat quickly once you learn this kind of um, process, you will get a better blending effect. I'm leaving a little bit of white right there, you can see. So I'm going to grab my original silk color we started with, the first one, the lightest areas, and go back over that right here. So I just have my silk. There's another color that I like that's a called um, Milky White works well, or there's another one called Bisque. You can do this as their base and then your final light layer to blend in the whiter whiter spots not wider let's do a little bit under her eye all right now this is a very dark blackish gray scale you're gonna see some of the pencil sketches because that's the style of the picture and the art doing her lip again just lightly all right so let's start pulling this base layer up toward the forehead this is the color we started with the silk you can tell i i do so many um skin tones that i probably replace mine every other month but i've been doing a lot this month so they're getting a little barren i do think i have it back up all right Go to our Barely Beige 11. We're going to put in some shadows around her forehead and face here. So kind of right where we see this. This is the Barely Beige. We want to go all around her kind of her foreline, her forehead line. And you know, the benefit of this grayscale is it's already put in for you where they want you to put the darker color, where the artist wants you to put the darker color. All right, let's grab that soft sun. And Pull down, over and down, into a little more of the white from the color you just did. So you're basically going over and then extending it into some white area. So it has a smooth transition from the one color to the next, so there's not like a harsh line, a color transition line. All right, leave it white. Let's grab our little bit of blush pink. I like to put a little pink right along the forehead here. Maybe right going like right up in the middle a little bit. My blush is about to die. Then I'm gonna grab my eggshell and we're gonna just pull down that soft sun. Leave the white more parts in the two center parts of the forehead white, more white, because that's where the light's gonna hit and the skin's going to be the most pale. And you're gonna go in. You see how I left that? You're gonna go in with your silk and cover this up 
or just kind of blend it in. Again, you can also do it that way. And you can see a little bit of pink spot here. And the purpose is to skin, you know, skin is like multi-toned, right? I mean, it's either we're, we have different ethnicities, but it's not like a solid flat color There's dimension and you get little patches of different color, little tiny spots. And you want it to look kind of almost like mottled. I don't know if that's the right word, but so um, that we have done with this first layer here. So I'm going to put that down. First thing I want to do is get my pink and I'm going to outline her eyes look a little white and I'm going to put that, make that a little pink right there. Make her eyes are a little red at this outline part right there. See how I did that? And this is the E04. And we had put that here. Um, I'm gonna get my blush and I'm going to, which is a little dry, but normally I would do that more in that kind of cleft area and then right under the chin. Okay, and I'm actually going to blush a little more now, which would work way better if it wasn't so dry. <laughs> oh, where's my other one? I have a backup, you guys. I might have to switch to another pink if I run dry, which it looks like I am. I should have thought that before I started. That's all right. We're just going to fill in our blush here with this very natural pink. And you can also later come back with the Prismacolor pencil and softly blend in more color. You can put a little pink. Let's see if there's more on the other end. On the chisel end, probably not, but sometimes. About the same. Eh. I'm going to add that little pink there. All right. So I'm going to definitely have to go in with pencil and touch that up because it'll be a little light. So we're going to actually go back to our barely beige and go over some of these black, um, with some of these pencil spots again to create a little more shadow. So we're going to go over this again like we did the very first time. We're just kind of creating more shadows, make it look more natural, go back over the same kind of grayscale areas you did before. Sometimes I'll repeat the entire process. Sometimes I just do touch up under the eyes, up here in the crevice of the eye, right here. Um, and then I'm going to grab my soft sun and I'm going to, um, again, pull that into the blush a little, gives it a little more of an orange. Again, go over that barely beige area as we did. Give it a little more of that kind of suntan shadow. Up here. You see how well this um, Nina paper takes these markers. That's why it's my favorite. It's not tearing up the page, it's blending, even by the second layer. All right, so I'm going to grab my eggshell again. We're just building, you know, and you, you absolutely do not have to do a second layer. Um, I like to sometimes when we have a little bit more of this pencil sketch uh, look, from this artist just to kind of make some of that um, look more natural and I'm again leaving open where I'm going to go back again just touching some of these lighter areas and I'm going to grab the silk again which was our lightest and just get these very, a little more on these white spots here. Now, 
sometimes you have to be careful because if you have it perfect the first time, you don't need to risk another layer, but this paper does take other layers well. Some do not. Sometimes the second layer will botch it, but you can see that is not occurring on my favorite paper. So now we're making the skin look a little more natural. Now we could do, if I had it, and I don't believe I do have it. Um, I don't have it now. So when I pause this and continue recording, I'll pull it. I have one that's a little darker called light suntan. I might put in sometimes in these black areas. So we got the basis of the face down. I normally would have more blush. So we're going to, I'm um, going to pause this video, see if I can find some replacement markers for my ones that are drying out and in my backup. And then we're going to continue the rest here um, and move on to do her hair. Okay, thank you for rejoining me <laughs> after that little pause. I found my soft, my light suntan I was looking for, and I do have another blush, my R20. Um, I might have actually pulled the older one, so I'm going to continue here. There we go, and get some of this blush into her cheeks. Um, ideally, it should have been a nice amount of pink in the very first layer before we put over the eggshell, except that I ran up. We're going to put a little here, a little under her eye, maybe a little in the corner of her eye right there, a little under her chin. That is my blush color. We can put a little right at the forehead line. And I will show you what to do with that. So, yeah, we got that nice pink there. And we did this darker pink right here, but I'm going to go over it. That's where we see the shadow. I'm gonna go back to my silk. I'm sorry, my eggshell. And I'm going to go over my blush. Blend that in a little with the skin tone, which we would have done more if I had the right one at the beginning. And then I'm going to grab the silk again. We're just reusing a lot of the same colors to go into these white areas here where the blush ends. And it looks like it has a little yellow tone, but it will fade. And also I am filming this at night under some kind of yellowish lighting. So just so you know. But we are giving her brunette hair with some reddish kind of yellow tones, so it's going to be perfect. So you can take this suntan, if you like, this light suntan E13, and just do a little bit of some dark spots where there's that darkest ink. Right under her chin, for example. Right under her eye. This is really good as a final kind of layer for some of those more pencil sketchy, grayscale kind of areas. And we're going to give her makeup, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm putting a little more right here, as you can see. I'm going to put a little up here. Uh, we do have to blend it. All right, so I'm going to have to grab my Barely Beige and I'm going to have to kind of try to blend a little bit of that in. And that will all come together in time. Of 
grab that silk, which is that lightest silk, and just kind of let's just go over everything to kind of set the colors back to our original base tone and over those that darker shade there. Just kind of gonna blend it all in to be very natural. Yeah, so she definitely has like an um maybe an olive olivish yellow complexion. Because we did so many layers. If we had just done the one layer and stopped, her complexion obviously would have been much lighter. But this is how we kind of mask some of these pencil pencil sketches lines here. Alright. This is we're just gonna let this dry. Let's sneeze. <coughs> Bless me. <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll let that continue to dry a little. So we're going to move down to her neck and kind of repeat the process, starting with our silk as our base layer. And I'm just going to go very light here because you're not going to see much silk over the dark areas. There's another color that works well as a base layer, which is the, um, our... Why I think zero zero. This one is three zeros, so they're a little different. All right, I'm just gonna just kind of squiggling over here because I don't need it 100% colored, and that little bit of z kind of swirly look gives the skin like that kind of mottled, almost like nat more natural non-flat texture, if that makes sense. Just the neck for now. Let's grab our, I'm gonna actually take our, yeah, let's just take our Barely Beige and jump on into these dark areas, especially under the neck, coming down like at an angle here, and then down, follow the darker sketches. Just kind of I hold it more on the side, so I'm doing like this to kind of just cover, follow some of these softer strokes areas. This is a little bigger of an area I might normally work, but that's all right. Next, we're doing our soft sun. I did find another soft sun because mine was, I believe, about to tank out. Is that this one? I think it is. Let me grab. Wait, is this? Shoot. <laughs> I mixed up which is the new, which is the old one. Silly me. Oh, wait. I just, that was a boo boo. That was eggshell. We don't, we're not at eggshell yet. See, I didn't put them back in order. That's what happens. I'm grabbing by habit. So uh, here we are at our soft sun. That's okay. It's okay. It's all good. Soft sun. Yeah, here we go. We got our more yellow tint here. This is the drier one. So let's grab a newer one. We're just going to kind of go over some of those areas we did. Leave my soft sun next to the barely beige where it belongs. Now I can grab actually my pink, my uh, lipstick natural, which is the E04. And put a little bit of pink here under the neck. A little bit of like kind of summer redness, maybe a little around the dip here. Right around there. And we're gonna take our blush and do a little pink, kind of right around the collar, breast, I'm sorry, bra, breast top area. So that's fine, let it look a little messy. And then let's grab the eggshell and start blending down and inward and over, starting what we did, starting to close in 
I have another eggshell here as well. Starting to close in the white space. And you can see I'm using a whole lot of ink. That's okay. I, you know, across what? About seven bucks to replace one. You can also, of course, do the replaceable ink. Honestly, I'm kind of lazy. I just buy a new one whenever I need, I need it. <laughs> like, because it's usually like one at a time that goes out. So it's seven bucks and I get a new one. Um, I'm not saying I recommend that, but that's what I do. So um, I just don't have space to store all those inks. And I, I, I tried once to try to refill my ink. Uh, replace it and I couldn't get the pen back together so you know <laughs> okay. I'm using my silk they're our lightest color and I am touching this back again over those more lighter spots the white whiter not whiter whiter white er spots And once we get our hair done, our makeup, if we're doing makeup, flowers, and everything will look better with the skin when it all comes together. I'm going to go, I'm going to grab the eggshell again, actually. See if I can blend a little bit more of this pink around the bust area upward. So it's a little softer. And then pull down here around this pink a little. Take my eggshell and go over here. Round the dress strap. And I just start going like this if I really need to get in and blend. I'm going to grab the E11. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to grab that light suntan again. And again, you can just skip the light suntan and do the E11 barely beige, but this is that darker one just to get real nice and dark under her neck for a nice shadow. And I'm going to put a little dark here. We're touching up now. Again, in some of these areas where we originally put the barely beige. Get some stroke kind of effects here. Maybe a darker shadowy area here. Now grab the Barely Beige. And you'll learn over time the names. You won't need the numbers because you'll use these so often with your skin tones. Honestly, I've done skin tones with so many different markers, pencils. These are the best. I, like, I've had the most natural effect with skin tones using my Copics. Um, so I just spent like like a year mastering Copic marker skin tones, and I didn't even bother with any others. Um, I would rather have one or two that I master than have multiple that I know a little bit. All right, so let's grab again um, the Soft Sun. Go over a little bit of so some of that again. She has a nice, almost like a Mediter maybe a gentle Mediterranean complexion. And our eggshell again. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that blush actually. The blush. Just put a little pink in this corner right here. Maybe on her back a little pink right here. Maybe right on this little clavicle. We're going to put some on her shoulder. And then I'm going to use my eggshell. Kind of go over some of that again. Pull down some of that soft sun. And leave the white spots there. Grab that silk, 
You can also use the bisque. The bisque is a little bit more of a brown tint, but it's almost translucent, or the milky white, but I am using the silk. Milky white is also good if you want very fair skin for these white areas here. All right. And just look how smooth, it's so smooth. Like it's like the whole color of the skin just settles. And these, it's just like, there's no ink on the page. I love it. All right, woo, my hand's sore. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> next I believe it's time to do these two shoulders and we will be done with the skin and I'm going to show you how to do hair with um, dark brown skin tones that I have that I often use for skin for you know Hispanic or Asian skins or African skins or just tan skins. The benefit of those browns with Copics is that you can also do skin tone and you can do earth type stuff and you can do hair now in the camera because it's so bright it's going to look really dark here but you're also seeing the contrast of the white next to it so it might look a little unnatural but it's going to settle it's going to fade a little and then when you get all the color in it's going to look very nice so whew, we're going to repeat the process if you're following along we're going to do this little bit of shoulder here in the silk our base and we're gonna put this silk on her shoulder. And it's one of those pictures where the skin just fades off, so it's it's a little tricky because you don't know exactly where to stop the, the lines of the picture. And I kind of don't like that personally because it's like, I feel like it's gonna be like a harsh drop off. So that we're gonna have to play with a little. All right, got our silk in here. Let's just keep it kind of straight down. And then we're going to kind of soften that cut off. I'm going to grab um, the Barely Beige. Of course, put a little here in these dark spots. We're going to just sketch over some of these dark areas here. Grab the soft sun. Go over that and a little into the white. I'm just kind of expanding out. A little bit over here. I'm gonna grab the blush because we want to put a little pink on her shoulder. Always want pink like on the shoulder because you assume like the sun kind of hits it or they're kind of hot. Just kind of like, like this, like around the top of the shoulder. So grab then the egg shell and let's try to blend in that pink. You can see how many times I've done this. So like I'm, I'm working a little faster, but the trick here keep your marker moving even if you're not hitting the exact right spot so the exact right place you know we want to get the one layer done at a time while it's still a little bit wet keep your marker moving and just kind of start dabbing blending and it will copic markers generally save the day and almost always will come through for you i've got my silk here i'm going the the more light skin area in the center here. And I did kind of leave it like soft and undefined a little, maybe like where it's going to end. Um, the skin, you know, you know what I mean? To go upward. I don't want like a harsh line, so I kind of made it uneven and a little natural there. I'm just going to grab my dark, um, wrong one, start light suntan again. And you can again go, just go over that with barely beige if you like. I'm just going to give a little bit of dark because you want like the shoulder to look 
like it's in shadow a little there, if that makes sense. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this here, right up above the dress. Now I'm just kind of brush stroking it, dabbing at it a little. I want to get a little more of that suntan right in these little dark areas here with all that black is there we go all right let's grab the barely beige and skin takes a long time but once you're done with the skin and these portraits you're like probably more than halfway done with the picture this is the beige now i'm going to grab the soft sun again Trying to give that shoulder some dimension. Let's grab that eggshell. Now I want to tell you one little tip. Let's say you do all, all that I'm doing. You do all this. It dries, whatever. You move on to the clothes. And so you don't like how it shows like the darker shadow areas with these darker skins and you know spots and stuff you can take let me just finish this up here and i'll tell you let me finish up with this silk this is the silk i'm going back in with this lightest our lightest color You can take, and here, like, it's been a while since we did this, right? And I'm going back in with the silk, and it's, it's adding a layer. Squiggling it in, giving it kind of a, a non-flat, like, look textured look to the skin. But let's say you don't like this. So when you think about it, these colors we used are the, um, the light suntan, the barely beige and the soft sun to get these darker areas before we started bringing in like the eggshell and the silk. If you didn't like this, you could take the barely beige. I'm not going to do it because I like how it looks. You could take your barely beige and start from here and you could just quickly, you could literally go over the whole neck, the whole arm in one solid color as a final top layer. So it'll be all a little darker to be more in sync with these darker shadow areas. And, but what's interesting is all the layers of color underneath are, will kind of like, like show through to make the skin kind of look, you know, like it's got different layers of color underneath. So that is another trick. If all those fails, you can do that. You could even do darker um, and turn this into like, uh, I don't know if I'd go much darker because then you're going to have harsh differences, but the Barely Beige, you can do a top coat and it will save the day. So, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. Um, later, I might come up and touch some things up. I do have here my black, and you can use any black alcohol marker. This is my black um, Copic. We're going to use this in the hair, but I'm going to actually put some black in her little nose holes here. To make it look more like dark space in there. Very carefully going to put some black around her teeth in what, where her mouth is open and it's black in there. And if you get a little on the teeth, it's all right because you're going to use a white gel pen or Posca to give her some white teeth. Going to make it look more like it's darker in there. Makes it look more real. All right, I am also going to take my black and do it in the iris, little circle-y iris part. If you call that the iris, the little dark part of her eye, not over the white dot, just right there and right here. This is stuff I would do later anyway, so I'm just doing it now. Okay, just some little, little things, little things, and we can always add more shadow stuff later around the nose or touch-ups. Um, once we get on the makeup and see what we like and don't like. Okay, so that means we are done with um, the skin. And I'm going to move these to the side. And we're going to start on the hair. And then that will be the first part of our video. 
Second part of this picture will be the flowers in the background or maybe the some of the details. Um, so there'll be different parts to each video. So, and if you get in here and look close, you do see a lot, it looks a little yellow. Again, it will look right when we get our hair and everything in. Um, but that is because we went over it with that soft sun. If we don't want them more, a little bit of a yellowish color, you can um, leave out the soft sun and just do the barely beige. But again, it's because I have these kind of fluorescent yellow lights overhead. So it doesn't look nearly that yellow when I'm looking at it off the camera. So that's that's all good but you'll see how great this comes together all right so for hair we're going to do like some brownish we're going to use the black for the areas where we already see black in this hair okay that i'm going to do first to the left and then i'm going to do this e09 burnt sienna we're lining them up left to right then i'm going to do e17 reddish brass I'm going to do E16 Dark Suntan. I'm going to do E13, no I'm not, because that was Light Suntan, we're not using. Ignore that. We're gonna skip and go to Chamois, E35. That's our yellowish tone. Um, so we have five here. And if you don't, you can use any black alcohol marker. You can use other alcohol markers that have similar colors. I'm just gonna kinda show you the process, how we're going to create her hair effect. This one has nice thick amounts of kind of black in it, in this kind of grayscale. So that makes it easy, but, so we're gonna take her the black here. And I'm just gonna start at the roots. And I'm gonna kind of touch in the areas very gently where we have some black already. Just kind of like brush, brush stroking it. Like that kind of a thing here. And you see how it gets really black again close to this flower. So we're going to do it black here. We're going to do some black over here. Wherever we see this black, all just some and keep it light. I'm not going to do all the hair at once. We're just doing this top kind of part. I am bringing it down like a little, you can see. All right, we're just going to stop there. Let's go to our next color, the reddish uh, burnt sienna, E09. And I'm going to kind of go over that black. Try to blend it into this red underlayer. You can swish over the black you already did. I mean, you're gonna just go right over the black and then get a little onto the white space around it and no perfect rhyme or measure. Okay, it's a little Getchy, that's fine. E17, we're doing reddish brass next. We're gonna go over that red. Start trying to blend it over the black and the previous red. Leave some white areas. Let's grab our next color, E15, the dark suntan, and start getting over those colors. Really want to start pushing over that black. Now, theoretically, I could have left off the black and just started with the first color, the first brown. 
and go over the, the black um, ink areas with that first brown. Then the more natural ink of the page black would have shown through. Dabbing still, because I'm going to bring in that chamoise. All right. Let's bring in, and this is a building process. Let's bring in this chamoise, chamois, E35. And we're just going to straight up go over all of it. It's kind of a brownish yellow. And we're going to just start going over everything. Solid. Like, our, like it's a top coat almost. You can bring it close to the hairline. Now we're going to let this sit. We are going to come back and go over this again and deepen these dimensions and kind of cover a little more of the black parts. So we're just going to leave that for now. All right, let it dry. Let's start again. Let's get our black. And we're going to do this side. So we're just going to kind of carefully sketch over some of these black areas. Follow kind of the curve. It's hard, but follow the curve of the black. Try to get it around the face, but not on the face. We just got a little on our face, so it's a little tricky. All right, that's enough. Let's go into our E09 Burnt Sienna. Start getting over some of that black. And this red is really is like the under layer. Um, under highlights, under lights. Is that what they call low lights? <laughs> I don't know. Taking this all the way to the ends around the face here. Let's grab our next one, the E17, the reddish brass. See how different it already looks because you have the yellow in that top and this top part with one of the, the, the two last colors. Kind of change it a lot. I hate the runaway strands. They're really hard to get without going off the page. All right. Careful around the face. All right, let's get our dark suntan. Shoot, do we already do that color? I don't think so. <laughs> I was thinking about what I want to do for her dress. My attention to red. Yeah, this is our second to last color. I'm going to kind of blend it over the black here. Getting some flyaways. Pulling color down. I'm going to grab the chamois, our yellowish, and cover everything up. Blend that in. Let's get that going. Um, I'm going a little faster because I feel like I feel so bad that these videos are so long for you guys, but... You can pause at any time, rewind. All right. So normally I wouldn't have gotten that black so close to her cheek if I was going slower, but I did. It's okay. Progress, not perfection. All right. So we're just, this lighter color is really just pulling those reds and those browns and everything together. Okay. 
We'll see how that kind of worked. So I'm gonna go back up here. All right, there we go. Nice and smooth. Whew, my hand's getting tired. Okay, we have them finish her hair and then we're gonna do her eyebrows or we can tackle the eyebrows now. Who wants to do that? Hmm. A little hesitant to use the black marker on the eyebrows. <sighs> I think we're gonna go for it. Barely gonna swipe just a little here. Swipe, 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 swipe. Very careful, barely. I'm gonna actually have to turn this at an angle. So I want it to go with the flow of the eyelash. I'm sorry, eyebrow. Okay, that's all we're doing for black. Barely touching it. Let's do the same colors on her eyebrows. A little bit of that next color, the E09. We only have to dab it because we have several colors we're doing, so. Might have to get a fine liner to come in and fix some of this. Let's do the E17 Reddish Brass. I figure out why it smells like bananas over on my art table here. There's no banana anywhere in sight. I don't understand it. I smell bananas. <laughs> like, what if I find like a banana peel covered up by some books or supplies or something? <laughs> Yikes. Why do I smell bananas? I'm on the second to last color now. Just kind of filling in these eyebrows. I might take, we're going to go back in later with a very fine black pen, fine liner to kind of give it a little more individualized strands. And let's just put a little of that chamois over it. It's okay if like a little bit of the gray scale of the eyebrows are sticking up because we're going to go over that with a very skinny, skinny black pen later when we do her makeup and stuff. All right, that's a good enough start. We'll fix all that up with the black. Um, I usually would use... Something I can't reach in at the moment, but I will do that in the next part of the video. All right, so we are now doing the right side of her hair, and that will be the conclusion of this video. And I might actually go back and up and touch up some of this. But now that you can see those black inks have kind of like look more natural now that it's dried and been blended over multiple times, um, it doesn't look like such harsh black lines as it did before. Okay, so, so we see how we have like similar yellow, light yellow, almost tan tones in here and the same shade in her hair. So it, it goes well together. So we're going to want to do the second part in a similar kind of um, coordinating color palette with some like oranges and reds. And yellows like what would go well with that with earth tones greens would be nice and etc all right so i'm going in here with my black <laughs> just looking all right haven't decided um what i'm doing for flowers i know a lot of you don't have copic markers so, or of the like full sets, um, even if I didn't cope with markers, you can get your own alcohol marker sets and find very similar colors and kind of copy what I'm doing. That would work as well, but I will see if I have a more of a budget marker I can use. Um, 
for these so we'll have to see all right so anyway we're going in with the brush strokes on the black just gonna go up We are going in with the E09. I just got quiet here because I thought maybe y'all were tired of hearing me talk. But if not, perfect. This is the second color. We're going in with the third color, which is the E17. Just gonna start mixing over. Some of this black. Let's get the wisps at the bottom. I'm going to go in with the E15, <coughs> the suntan, dark suntan. All right, let's go in with the E35. This is the chamois, the lightest. And I need to pull my replacement on this one because I have used it to the bone. This is how much I love my skin tones. I know you can use them for hair. I've used all these browns often for trees tree trunks, you know, for earth tones, for skin. Chamois is a little too much yellow for skin. Maybe you can do it in a few spots, but depends on what you're going for. All right. So this one will need a little more i think i'm going to go backward to the light um actually we'll wait till our second we're going to do some touch up this so i'm going to get my black and just continue over here all right we're gonna go down let's try to follow the curve it's kind of hard This is our second color. We gotta get our third color, E17. And if you're yellow, like your chamois ran out, you can just grab any kind of yellow, goldish alcohol marker of a different brand and just really lay on over that color. I've done that many times. 
Let's get our A15 suntan. Some of these end pieces here. Then I'm going to grab my chamois, which is my yellow. Let's see, do I have any yellow? Mine's running dry. Do I have a yellow? I have an orange. How would that look? Let's see. I'll put some orange in there. It would really orange up her hair. This is my Windsor Newton marker. Do I have any over here? Uh, sometimes. Well, I don't think I do, but. Anyway, this is our chamois. Let's put this in here. I've been known to take a top layer of a, of a different color to kind of cover everything that will then let the other color shine kind of through. So that's what I'm considering. If we do an orange, her hair's gonna be very auburn. All right, so we can go over with some of our others. Like I'm gonna grab the reddish, that first burnt sienna. Put that in over like a few of these areas here. You see where the black kind of was. Just doing some touch ups. Kind of just re redo some of these colors. We got the E17. Just kind of deepening things here a little. Uh, we've got the E15 suntan. grab and you certainly don't have to do this and you can do your chamois again. I'm going to take this Windsor Newton orange marker and see what happens. Yeah, it kind of just looks like the same chamois but it's so milky. I love these markers. Yeah, and I'm using the chisel side and it's really just softening everything. It makes it look kind of fluffy going over every single color together, like it's a top coat. And it kind of just like evens out all the tones. And then you see that, like you see so many different multidimensional tones, but this is like, it's like a, it's almost more like, an, like a blender to blend all your colors finally together. And then you just get a little bit of that twinge of that more Irish um, auburn orange slash red. But because there's so many darker colors underneath, it's not going to be like, like a blatant orange, you know? Yeah, so you can go over multiple times. Let's see what I'm doing here. Isn't that pretty? So I think we have a good enough side over here. We're just going to go straight into going over this. I don't think we need any more darker shades here. So it's changing it as we go. Um, the Windsor Newton markers, and again, take any a wide chisel nip of a, a good, or decent, um, moist, juicy alcohol marker. Maybe look for an orange shade. This looks more neon almost, and that looks more yellowish, but I just kind of go over this. Test it in one small area, make sure it looks okay. But Prismacolor Premier markers work well. Um, Arctic's markers. 
Uhus, of course. One of the absolute best, in my opinion. Actually, I'm gonna go all the way up here with this orange. I don't think, normally I might do some touch-ups with the dark ones, but I think we've done enough here. You know, you could spend a long time on here if you really wanted, but. All right, here my water. go and I'm doing it again I'm really just getting these colors blended in pulling 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 nice natural tones of hair really pretty but so it's not quite as gold it's kind of a it's kind of like a an Irish. I mean, you could do heavier on the red one when you touch up. You could make this more of a gold and have more of the gold show through. I love that Irish kind of carrot top look color. That's what I'm going for here. So really, this is going to look really nice with a lot of greens. So I think we're going to do greens in her dress that coordinates with the leaves. And these will be green, and then we'll just figure out what kind of earth tones we want to do for her flowers. But we want it to be a contrasting color, so it stands out from the orange. So I'm going to do a little experimenting, pick the colors for part two of our video. And you can take your black at any time to kind of go here to make those, the kind of the some shadow... And, kind of, and then you can take your finger and just, you can smooth it as well. All right, just right there where you want it to look a little more like just a lot of shadow there. Doesn't blend too well. A little. A little bit here. Went a little bit to touch up these roots a little, really nice and black at the root, because she probably had dark hair and dyed it. Bleached it and dyed it in there. I didn't intend for her to be quite this um, orange Irish, but I love it. And then you can even get your chamois and you can get back in here and you can, that was that lightest one, you can kind of get in here with the chamois again which is your Copic and go back over and darken it to look, make it now look, making it look a little more brown in some areas. Show some of that brown. And all these layers just gives it a lot of three third dimension look. I love it. Isn't that pretty? All right, and we can go back over here. Didn't do that orange in her eyebrows, so the eyebrows are a little darker. And we're basically done with her hair, um, you know, until you're satisfied. You can touch up with a little reds here and there. You can go back over this as many times with the orange as you want. You can put a little bit of that suntan in some of these darker, these areas here. This is the suntan. All right. Well, I think we're done with part one of our video. Of course, we have makeup and we have eyes and more things to in her face to do. But in part two, we are going to tackle the flowers in the background. Um, I always do uh, makeup last. I want the makeup to coordinate with everything else and probably coordinate more with what's over here. So I'm gonna get my colors and mediums picked. We'll move on to part two. I hope you enjoyed and learned and played and 
we will continue in part two.